All right, so um, we are uh, coming down here towards the end of unit one, which is super exciting. Um, tonight is all about JSON and Fetch. So uh, I will go over some announcements and then we'll talk about JSON, we'll talk about Fetch, and then you guys are gonna do um, a really fun little studio to practice fetching some data and displaying it on a page. And then I'll come back um, at uh, eight o'clock for um, review and go over that solution. Uh, so announcements. Uh, graded assignment five is uh, going to be due on Thursday, the 8th of December, and there will be a catch up class the Monday prior to that. So um, you will, you know, have the ability to, you know, work with your TA. Um, this one is uh, fun and interesting. It combines a lot of different um, concepts that you've been learning, including tonight's topic of Fetch and JSON. Um, but there's different pieces to it. And um, so, you know, you definitely, if you haven't started working on it, you should definitely uh, get started so you make sure you um, can nail down each part of it. Um, but by and large, I think everyone has an okay time with this one. All right, so the last days of class, let's talk about this. Um, so after the eight, um, which is the first Angular class, there's gonna be two more Angular classes, classes um, 19 and 20 on the 12th and 15th. And then there's going to be a catch-up class on the 19th of December, which is the last time we all get together before the end of the year. And that's a it's a catch-up class, which means you know you're just working on your graded assignments if you aren't already done. So um, you have to have grade assignment six uh, finished by the end of the night in order to you know get full credit for it. Um, so this is really a little bit different than previous catch-up classes where, you know, you, you still have a few more days after the catch-up class. This is the deadline. Um, it's the last minute help and it, and not just grading at time at six, if you still have, um, you know, a partial grade or something on one of the previous ones, you can use this class to help get the kinks worked out with the TA. Um, but that, that en enrollment deadline for unit two is that night. So all six of your assignments have to be turned in by 8.30 p.m. on Monday the 19th, um, by the end of that catch-up class in order for you to continue on to unit two, which is going to start on uh, January 5th. Um, we originally had the schedule set for January 2nd and then Clark realized that that's actually a day off for all of launch code. So we're starting on the 5th. Um, so, you know, extra extra day off. We get a couple weeks um, of a break. Okay. so. Um, yeah, just keep all of those dates in mind um, and just, you know, try to stay on top of everything as best you can. Um, okay, I see I've got a couple questions. Hoden? Hi, I was just uh, wondering, will the class setup change in unit two or will it kind of be the Monday, Thursdays and then kind of the setup we have now? It will be the same format. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm, oh, sorry, go I was just going to say that I'm not sure whether or not they switch up the TA groups or not, but um, you may or may not still be with the same TA group. But other than that, the format's the same class-wise. Ricky? Will we need uh, the what we learn in class 20 to finish uh, graded assignment six? No, the, the not really. Um, the stuff that is... Uh, most of the stuff on Angular um, that is required for the assignment is pretty much covered in the first two Angular classes. But I will make sure to give you fair warning if there's anything that I have not yet taught, you know, prior to that class on the um, 15th. Um, because, but that's why, that's why, you know, they don't make it due on the last class. They give, you know, give you yet another class to get it turned in is because of some of those last, last minute concepts. It is a tight fit, but it's kind of the way they have to do it in order to get everybody into unit two. All right, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so um, let's let's get into lecture. Uh, JSON is a very short topic. Um, I'm gonna just talk about the concept of an API and we'll talk about the JSON syntax and then we're gonna move right into fetch. Okay, so what is an API? You've heard this uh, term thrown around. Um, an application programming interface, and it just facilitates the sending and receiving of data between clients and servers, and it helps um, applications talk to each other. You can have two different technologies that can interact because an API bridges the gap. So before you, you know, you saw me, I had this diagram with the devices and the internet and kind of 
one little icon that represented, you know, the back end. But what really what's going on here is that you're communicating with the API and making your HTTP requests um, to the API. And the API is then, you know, communicating uh, with the server and uh, which goes and it gets the data from the database and all of that. And then, you know, returns that to you with the response. So um, with JSON, JSON, you know, is this JavaScript object notation is what that stands for because it's very similar to a JavaScript object. Um, and it's very popular format. Um, there used to be another one called XML. I mean, it's still around. It's just not as popular now as JSON is today. Um, but this is you know, the most common one. Um, you'll come across it a ton, um, very likely. And so this is the one we are um, focusing on. And uh, you can receive a single JSON object, or you might receive an array of objects, um, but they will all have this syntax. So it's similar, like I said, to JavaScript objects, but there's a couple of differences. Um, for one thing, all the keys have to be in double quotes, whereas with JavaScript objects, you typically don't put the keys in quotes, even though they are strings. Uh, but they have to, it has to be quotes, and it has to be double quotes. All string values have to be in double quotes, not single quotes. Um, but anything else, other data types like numbers and booleans and you know arrays and objects, that's just uh, same syntax as usual, no quotes. Um, so that really is it. I'm going to show you an example here real quick um, where I've got this endpoint. This is a tool, um, and this is the desktop version of the tool that you're seeing, um, where you can uh, put in an endpoint like I've done up here. And um, you can choose which HTTP request type you want. And you can see Git and Post are here at the top. Those are the most common. Um, Gary, can you slide that window a little to your left on the screen? Because it's covered by your video. Oh, thank yeah. you. OK. Um, sure. OK. And, um, and can, can you guys read what this is down here? Can you read the, is this big enough? Yes. OK. Yeah. Um, yeah, I made it a little bigger. I just yeah. sure. So um, all I have to do is hit send to this endpoint. And if everything is set up right, I get the response down here. And uh, you can you know, view it um, in a lot of different ways. This is the raw. Um, that's like a HTML style preview. And then you know, pretty is just kind of where it's nicely formatted with the indents and everything. And, and this is you know, coming back as JSON. Um, you can see that there um, are some hidden headers here where it automatically had, um, you know, accept any type and, you know, a few other things like that, that I didn't even have to set any of that stuff. I didn't, in this case, have any query parameters. I just went to the endpoint and hit it just to get a random quote. Um, and this API is uh, actually, wait, which one was this? <laughs> I've forgotten already. Um, uh-oh, I moved my window and now, yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's why I had it over to the right was so that I could uh, tap on it. Um, yeah, this is the this is the quotes, the random quotes. So this is uh, this guy has his documentation actually right here in a GitHub, his GitHub uh, uh, repo, and it you know kind of gives you the information on the API and guidelines. And um, in the reference, he's got you know all the different ways that you can hit different endpoints on the API to get the data in different ways. And the way I was doing it was this get random quote. Um, and you can see it's a get request and it's just you know the API URL slash random. And then they give you additional query parameters. I could actually specify the max or minimum length. I could include you know tags um, that might you know narrow it down to a certain topic. Uh, maybe I'm looking for it by a certain author. Um, and I could, you know, include all those. And they've got they've got some examples here, right? Like um, you can see here, tags are technology and famous quotes. Or in this case, you know, tags are history or civil rights. Um, down here, max length e equals fifty. Um, there's different ways that you can, you know, search that. So I could actually um, let's just do this. I'm going to add these query parameters directly into. Got to get Postman back. I'm going to add those directly into here and send. And we see we get a quote by Winston Churchill. History is written by the victors um, that meets those criteria. So, you know, these 
can be really powerful for getting data. You can, um, you know, depending on how the documentation, you know, how much they have it set up for you to be able to use their API and how well they have it documented, which can be really hit or miss from API to API. Um, but this one has pretty good documentation. It's very straightforward. So it's a good example um, to show for you guys. And it's public and it doesn't require any sort of special key. So this is a good one um, to practice with. So um, as you can see, um, this is the JSON. All of the keys are in quotes. Um, all of the strings are in double quotes. And everything else, you know, pretty much looks as you would expect, like the number here, 34. You know, there's an array right here in case it has more than one tag. Um, et cetera. But that's it. That's all there is to JSON. It's just a way to have data formatted that can then be translated to just about any technology. Okay. So let's go back to our slides and talk about fetch. So getting data from an API, um, I'm going to actually talk about the concepts of asynchronicity and promises first, and then I'm going to go over the syntax of how to make fetch requests. Um, because this, this can be things that might be hard to get your head around. I just want to kind of make sure we're all on the same page about this. So asynchronicity, the idea here is that you have, you end up with two separate timelines if you trigger something that you can't predict how long it's going to take. Um, network requests are asynchronous by, by their very nature. You know, you've got the speed of your network, you've got the location, um, and the size of the data, you know, it's, maybe it's a massive array or massive objects, um, tons and tons of data. Um, and you can't predict that. So, you know, you send off this request, but the rest of your code keeps executing. And so it, suddenly you have this race condition. And we've talked about that before, this idea that you can have two different things happening at the same time. And you don't know which one's going to complete first. So you can kind of see in this example over here, I've got, you know, these comments that kind of represent, you know, these different lines of code you might have, right? So you've got some code, then you fetch some data, you know, goes to the API and makes the request. And then your code continues, got more code, even more code, more code here too. But, you know, when exactly does the request come back, right? It could come back at any point as all this other code is executing. And that can have implications for what happens when you're loading your page. Let's say you're depending on some data to appear on the page and you, you know, don't want the user to see the page until the data has arrived. You have to have a way of controlling exactly how everything loads and what order things happen in. So um, there are ways to do that. Um, there's special syntax that you can use in order to um, you know, kind of uh, dictate exactly how everything's gonna happen. So promises um, are the concept that, you know, uh, you know you're going to get some data. It just hasn't come yet. It's the expectation of the response. And there's actually a class, the promise class. This is talked about in your book. Um, I say book, it's online, but you know what I mean, <laughs> your, uh, your, your curriculum. Um, and uh, it, you know, the, cl the class has methods, it has, you know, a behavior attached to it that you can then use to um, carry this out. So when you fetch data from an API, um, like JSON, you have two promises actually that are going on. You've got um, the request itself that is going to result in a response. And then you've got the data itself that is packaged up. And in our case, it, it'll be packaged up as JSON. So you can kind of think of um, this as, you know, this, this example of an Amazon package, right? You place an order and then they get the order and somebody has to go fulfill the order. So they're like, okay, we got your order. Cool. You'll get it in a couple of days. Um, and they, you know, go to the warehouse and they find the items, they put them all in a box and then they send the box to you. And when the box arrives, you have to open it. And then you might have some items inside that are in their retail packaging and you have to open those as well in order to use them the way that you intend to use them. Um, so you can kind of think of this process of um, you know, fetching data and how promises work as the same process. You're going to, you know, you're going to ask for it, you're going to put that request out there, and then you have to wait for it to come back. And then when you get it, you have to unbox it a little bit before you can use it. So the, the syntax we're going to talk uh, cover tonight is going to do exactly that. 
So um, you're using promises to control the timing of your code execution, like I was talking about before with asynchronicity. Um, so you want to be able to say, I, you know, I, this is the code that I want to execute after the, the operation completes, right? When the response comes back. And there's a couple different ways to do it. Um, your curriculum teaches you about um, then. And that's uh, a tried and true method that you are going to see in some code, but there's also a, a more modern way to do it. And I wanna teach you that as well, because uh, in my experience, everything that I've used, it's been the modern syntax. And I wanna make sure you're exposed to both of them. Um, because you may be working in an older code base that still uses then, or you might be working with um, the other one, which is async and await. Um, so we'll, we'll cover both of those. Okay, so the first one, fetch um, with then. So you first, you use the fetch function to make a request um, for JSON from an end, API endpoint, which is the URL. Um, and then you're going to attach then to declare a function that should run once the promise has been fulfilled, once it comes back uh, with a response. And you can use the method, oops, I, I hit that twice, but use the method JSON dot, dot JSON on the response object that comes back to extract the data. And then you're gonna use that then another time and say, this is what I want to happen once the data is unpacked. Okay, so it's kind of two steps, like I said. So let's look at this example. Um, first, we have the fetch function. We're gonna call it fetch, and then we're gonna give it this endpoint. And then um, in order to control the timing of this, we have you know, both of our then methods that are being called. And the first one, you can see that, that um, it's being given an anonymous function whose parameter is the response object. So you're capturing that response object by virtue of creating this anonymous function and just making that the parameter. And then um, inside of that is where you actually call that JSON method on the response object. And then to that, you attach the next then. So they're nested inside one another. And then of course, that then method gets, um, and I, I'm using the, then, the word then a lot here, but, <laughs> <laughs> stick with me, the then method um, also gets an anonymous function. And this is where you capture the data. Um, and then you can do stuff with it. And you can call, by the way, you can call these anything you want, just like any parameter response could be, I, a lot of times I've seen it done and I've done it myself. We use RESP, R-E-S-P, as a, a slight abbreviation for response. That's very common um, because you still want to indicate what it represents. Um, but with the, the data, you know, I choose to use data. You, you also will see examples where they just say JSON, um, or it could be something else. It could be another word that specifically represents the data, like maybe you're getting product information or something like that, and you could call it whatever you want. Grant, you got a question? Yeah, I'm still a little confused on the response being passed to the anonymous function. Yeah. And where exactly we get that from, because... You know, I, as a parameter variable, it seems like we haven't we haven't done anything with it yet. Or like, where does it actually come from? Like, since before the fetch, we we haven't initialized anything called response or anything. So I'm just a little lost on where that is. Yeah, no, that's a great question. It is confusing. It's kind of like when um, when you are um, using an event listener and you have that parameter event. And it's like, wait, where does that come from? Well, it's provided by the browser. So this is kind of similar where you use fetch and um, you attach the then method and it is um, built into all of that through this, through this promise class. It's built in that the data is going to arrive and that you can give it a name and that's the response. So, it's already there and we're just capturing it by giving it a name as the parameter. Okay, that, that makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then the same thing happens when we unpack the next layer by call, you know, calling the JSON method on the response object and then unpacking that and calling that the data or whatever. Like I said, you can you can name it anything you want. I called it data. 
as a generic way just to represent this. This is your JSON data that's come back. Okay, so that's that's one syntax, um, the traditional syntax. Um, and now I'm going to introduce the other one. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to go and we're going to code some stuff and I will demonstrate this for you. Okay, so this is the more modern approach, um, async and await. So the key here is that you have to have a function that's declared that's made asynchronous with the use of the async keyword. And um, then you can uh, you know, capture your response by setting a variable and then just um, awaiting the fetch. And then uh, with, the, with the keyword await, and then you capture the data the same way and use await again. Um, and this is pretty straightforward. It's just like two lines of code inside the function. So you can see down here below, um, you know, we've got the keywords async and await. Um, and inside this function that in this case, for this example, I just call it fetch product data, you know, um, as an example. Um, but you're capturing the response object by declaring, in this case, uh, you do declare your own variable and you just set it equal to whatever comes back from the fetch. So it's the same concept, it's just a different syntax. And by awaiting it, it basically means do not move on past this line of code until that comes back. That's what await does for you. And then on the next line, um, you know, it's the same thing. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's the fetch function, right? And the endpoint. Yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself with my uh, transitions here. Okay, and then on the next one, um, you are, you know, capturing the data with the data um, variable that you're setting, and you just set it equal to whatever comes back from response.json as it's unpacking the data. Okay, Ben, you got a question? Yeah, so <clears throat> this concepts that you're showing us right now, was this created after the problems in the late 90s, early 2000s, where web pages would like load different sections at a time and take forever because it didn't know what to load first? Um, you, know, you remember what I'm talking about? <laughs> I do. Um, and I was not a developer back then. Um, I, I mean, I, I was an amateur, um, but I know exactly what you're talking about. and. Really, um, I'm not sure exactly um, how it was all being used, but um, at the time, I mean, it wouldn't have, it would not have been this syntax, of course, it would have been the previous syntax, but conceptually, um, you know, this stuff has been, been around for a long time. Uh, and I think that really how the page loads, it's a function of how you set it up. And so, a lot of the concepts of how you approach um, designing your page and, and having things sequence in a way that it loads in a way that's friendly to your user, that can still be done very, very badly if you don't know what you're doing or you don't care. Um, I mean, I could absolutely create a website where things are loading all over the place and it's kind of random. I mean, I worked on something actually not that long ago <laughs> at a job um, where, uh, there was like all kinds of weird stuff loading in different places. And I was like, hey, could we maybe like, you know, um, hold some of this stuff and make it not appear on the page until most of it is there because it just, you know, would be less confusing. So um, that's really just a function of, of how you choose to sequence everything um, with your code. And, and this syntax, um, either one of these um, ways of doing it is how you control that. You can say, you know, I don't want this stuff to happen until I'm sure I've got the, the data back. Does that make sense? Yes, yes it does. Okay, yeah, because you absolutely are in control of all of it. Um, and it, it can be real confusing at first um, because you can be trying to fetch some data and loading some stuff on your page and, and you'll have mistakes and your console will be like, there's no data, it's, it's undefined. And you're like, why is it undefined? And then it's because you have that race condition and it turns out the data wasn't there yet. Um, but you can sequence things in a way to prevent that from happening and make sure that the content doesn't load on your page. Um, sometimes it's as simple as setting the body, setting uh, the CSS of the body as uh, either um, hidden with the visibility property 
or display none with the display property um, so that it is there, but it doesn't actually show up until um, you're, you're ready for it to. That's very common. Mina? Uh, here, which is unboxing? Um, is it the extract data? Uh, what was it? What was it? Uh, actually, you you uh, actually helped us to relate with an example, right? For Amazon is uh, unboxing the uh, yeah and whatever thing. Uh, which one is is it that extract data that response dot JSON is like unboxing the yes. whole whichever we obtain as a response? Yeah. Will yeah. it come to a JSON format that response dot JSON method? Exactly. Yeah. It basically says I'm ready for the JSON, show it to me. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to switch over to, hold on just a second. I'm gonna switch over to an example here. Um, I created this a while back um, uh, and it's actually part of, part of my document of exercises, but now I've made it where it actually has starter code and a solution um, so that you guys can practice on it if you want to, but I'm gonna do it for you now. And the idea on this little page is that you can choose, and I'm going to restart it so that it's empty. There you go. You can choose a quote, advice, or a dad joke. So we're here. I'm looking at the console. The reason I'm looking at the console is because in the code, I have set this. I got to go over to the script. I've set this to console log the data so we can actually see the object. Um, and this should be you know, the, the same as... Uh, the, what we saw in Postman. The difference is Chrome doesn't really show it in the JSON format. It has its own formatting. So you're not seeing those double quotes with the keys and all that kind of stuff. And that's that's really why I wanted to show it to you in Postman is so you could see that the JSON really does look like this when it comes through. Um, but for, for logging it in the console in the browser, it ends up coming out like this. And that's okay. This, this is helpful um, for you to do this, at least initially, just so you can see what's available. What properties do I have available to me? Because then you can use it. Um, so if we look at this example, you know, I've got these three buttons. Um, I've got this little space down here. So let's take a look at the HTML because um, I want you to see kind of, you know, how this page is laid out. So I've got the header. I've got the main um, area and the sections in here. So here's the buttons, three different buttons that have three different IDs. And then I just have this section called result. And so, and then I've got my little footer with my, you know, uh, references to the uh, APIs themselves. So then over in um, scripts, I can actually, you know, have my window uh, load listener, and then I can set an object for the result. Um, using get element by ID that represents that section where I can I want to put the text when it comes in. And then I have a single event listener. And instead of, I mean, you could do individual ones on the buttons, on each button and go, you know, actually create objects for those. In this case, I chose just to do it on the document. And then I'm just checking the ID of the event.target, which is the element. Um, to see was was you know this quote um, section is or, or button is that what was clicked on and if it is then I fetch from that API so that's what's going on here this is called event de delegation when you do it this way um, by just checking the document and then checking the ID of the uh, target um, so I use fetch and I put in the endpoint which is you know this API slash random. Um, and I'm using the then, then um, method. And you can see that, um, you know, VS Code is putting up this information. You can see that this is part of the promise class. It's a method of the promise class. And it shows you exactly kind of what the um, syntax is. And there's a lot going on there because uh, it can, you can actually do quite a lot with it. We're keeping it simple and we're just, you know, getting the JSON. So that's all we're really concerned with. So we do that, and then um, this is an arrow function, which is the same thing as me. Instead of doing it this way, I could say, you know, function response, and then, you know, put these in uh, brackets like this. Um, and I can even, you know, do it on the next line like you're used to seeing it. 
um, to where, you know, you've got this going on. Um, and then um, you take the data from the JSON and um, that's when we ha actually have access to the data. And then we can do something with it. So this is the important part. Um, once you have the data, how are you gonna use it? So what I've done is say, okay, I've got this result. I know this corresponds to my section here with ID result. That's where I wanna put the text that comes back. Um, and in this case, uh, I've got you know data.content and data.author. I wanna use both of those. And as a reminder, if we go back to here um, and run this again, oh, that's interesting. Oh, it's messing up because I changed my my uh, I changed my uh, my format <clears throat> and it doesn't like it. Here, we're gonna go over here and I'm gonna undo my changes and put it back the way it was and then it'll work. Okay, <laughs> it's probably like a parentheses or something that I didn't line up quite right. Okay, um, so there it is. Yeah, and. You can see here we've got content is the actual quote itself and author um, is the name of the author. Um, those are the two properties that I'm interested in. So those are the ones that I'm gonna do. And I've got this class that I created for text left and te text right to format it on the page with some CSS. And then I'm making sure to use the quote um, HTML entity there and you know ampersand uh, Q-U-O-T uh, semicolon. That's how you can create a web safe quote. And I'm putting that on either side of the data.content. And then below, I have a, a little dash with the author's name. And you can see how that turns out on the page. We have the, the content within quote, and then we have a dash and the author right down here. Mina, you have a question? Uh, can you show me how the response will be without uh, converting to JSON? Um, sure, we can, we can console log the response. Yeah, we can do that. Um, hold on. Um, um I can actually just console log the response here. Um, if it didn't break the page because of my format changes, let's find out. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a completely different object, um, but any headers that were involved, it tells you what that is. It tells you what the status is. You've got the 200 status, which you know is okay. Um, tells you that it's cores, which I'm not gonna go into right now. Um, that's something that you can investigate uh, in lift off when you do your, um, when you do your uh, capstone project. So um, yeah, this is just the information about the request itself and the response that comes back to that request. That's what the response object um, does. And then the actual body, um, when you use the uh, JSON, the dot JSON method, that's what actually extracts the data from this response object. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Saran? You have a question? Um, can you please go to the HTML file? Say that one more time. HTML file. Uh, oh. I want to see like, uh, uh, you here in the line number 24, you mentioned the data, right? Uh, yeah, in the JSON, mm -hmm. sorry. In line number 24, uh, there is a data. So uh, the question is like, we don't want to like declare a variable like a yes. dot, um, when you uh, like a fetch response, like function response, in the same way, like we don't want like a, uh, like response dot JSON uh, equal to function of data. We don't want to do that. We have to use in, in with this syntax, we have to use another dot then, you know, the then method in order to okay. access that to unpack it. No, no, mm -hmm. we, we don't want to declare that uh, like in a function, we don't want to do that. Uh, oh, well, are you talking about this, this syntax right here? Yeah, 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 that's just an arrow function. It's just, um, 
Okay, so automatically yeah. they got it. Yeah, let me, I'm going to undo these changes and leave it back the way that it was, um, just so you can, you know, see the way that originally was done. Um, we're, let's code this next one, and I'm going to use the traditional function syntax that you guys are more accustomed to. Okay, so this next one, and I'm sorry if you can't read that, that gray is really dark, but basically what we've got going on here is we're going to um, wire up the second button on the page. So uh, we did the quote. Now we're going to do the random advice <laughs> from a different API. Um, so this one, uh, we want to actually say if event.target, that's the um, button on the page, dot ID equals advice. So um, only if that's, that's the one that was clicked in this click event, uh, or click listener rather. Um, we will then fetch from this other API. So I'm going to put um, this endpoint right here that I have uh, provided in here as the uh, argument for the fetch, uh, the fetch, um, gosh, wow. Function is the word I'm looking for. Good heavens. Okay, and then I'm gonna say dot then and then this is where we're going to put, you know, give dot then um, function, and I'll do it the traditional way, and I'll just do it like this. Um, and so we'll have uh, the response, and we're just going to say response dot JSON, and um, then we can actually right there we can attach the second then and do another function to get the data. And this is where we now can do something with that data. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is just, <coughs> excuse me, we're gonna console log it. So we can take a look at what's, you know, the JSON that's come back um, and see what random advice we get when we um, do this. So if I've wired this up properly, um, when we click this button, we should get some advice on the page. Oh, no, we, we won't get advice on the page because I haven't done that part yet, right? But we should get it in the, in the um, thing, yes. Now, here's something else. Sometimes um, these APIs are set up to provide um, what's called a slip. And so it's an object that actually has a, um, a property called slip. And then that it corresponds to an object that then has all the properties you're interested in. And this one's real straightforward. I asked for random advice. It gives me the single object with the slip. Inside the slip is the advice and the ID. That's it. So I'm basically just interested in data.slip.advice. That's how I'm going to access this text right here. That's what that tells me by taking a look at how the data actually came through. So now I can do something very similar to what I did here um, with the result, except for I don't need an author. So I'm just gonna leave that alone and I don't need the quotes because it's not a quote, um, but I do need data.slip.advice because that's the property inside that JSON, the properties um, where I can access that information. So um, this one's a little bit simpler there. Um, let's go take a look and see if it works out. Let's do this. And there it is. No one knows anyone else in the way you do. <laughs> Whatever that means. Let's get a different one. One of the top five regrets people have is that they didn't have the courage to be their true self. That's a good one. That's good advice. Um, and there you can see it's, you know, data.slip.advice right there. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, and every API, you know, passes the data out a little bit differently. So you usually just kind of have to look and see, you know, how, how is it coming to you? And then you can use the properties from there. Mitchell, you got a question? Yeah, I'm just curious. Um, did you do all of this within um, a like load event listener? Yes. So at the very top here, I've got my window uh, level uh, load listener. And inside that is where I declared the result object to have access to that section where I'm putting all the text. And then I have a document level listener for click events that just checks and see what see which one was clicked before I you know have my code. So if it was the quote button, then it 
does this fetch. And if it's the advice button, then it does this fetch. Yeah, that's, um, I've got that kind of marked right here. This is called event delegation when you do the click event on the document instead of doing it on the button directly. Great, thanks. Yeah, there are multiple ways to do things as always. Okay, did we have another question? Mina, you got a question? Yeah, in the first function, you used Amazon code uh, uh, that is surrounded by inside the data content. Um, and in the second advice function, you remove the Amazon code. What is the difference? Um, I, I removed which? Uh, you removed the Amazon code, Q U O T. Oh, yeah, because. Uh, uh this little thing right here it's because um i only want quotes around it when it's a quote that's all it's just how i wanted to format it on the page i wanted to put quotes around the quote and i didn't want to put quotes around the advice that's all okay fine yeah Got just it. A, it was just a personal styling choice on, of my part all right uh ben question and then i'm gonna move on to the next one on line 42 it says something about you haven't committed yet is that can you explain what that is because I don't think I've ever seen that on my screen. Uncommitted changes? Yeah. Yeah, this is a um, extension called, um, which one is this? I think it's called GetLens, yes. It's an extension called GetLens that I have that tells me which lines of code were done by who and when. And so it's just you know telling me, I can't tell you when this was committed because you haven't committed it yet. Otherwise it would tell me, like if I go up here and uh, do it on something, yeah, me two years ago, <laughs> added files and updated README. That was my commit message two years ago when I when I did that line of code. Yep, Thanks. just an extension. Okay, all right. Let's let's move on and go to um, the dad joke, the very last one. And what I'm going to do for you on this one is use async await, so you can see example of that in action. Um, this this particular one, um, so we have this was the advice slip uh, uh, JSON API that I used. Um, by the way, this is the documentation for it, and that that link is in here if you want to come and investigate this. The last one is I can has dad joke, which is you know silly, but um, it's not as cool as a cheeseburger, but it's uh, cool. Okay, so. It, it gives me, you know, an idea, but something that's different here is it actually requires this um, header if you want it in something other than HTML, because the default response format is actually text slash HTML, and we want application slash JSON to make sure we're getting it in JSON. So in order to do that, I have to add a header, and that can be done in the fetch function by just providing it as a second argument after the endpoint. So um, We'll do that part first, and I've provided it right here. This is the header we're going to add. So I'm going to copy that. Actually, I need to copy this as well. OK, um, so we're going to start out by just getting our um, our logic in place to make sure that it's the dad joke uh, button. And I want to double check the ID is dad hyphen joke. OK, so if um, event dot target dot ID equals dad joke, if this is the button that was clicked, then we will do um, our fetch. But if I'm gonna use async await, I actually need to put this in a function and then we can just call the function after. So um, I'm gonna say async and function. And um, that doesn't actually need a parameter, the function itself. And, oh, but I have to give it a name. I'm so silly, not anonymous. Um, I'm going to actually give this a name. So I'm going to say um, get dad joke. I'm just going to call that my function. All right, get dad joke. And then inside the function, we can um, capture our response, let response equal fetch. And then this is where, um, because I need a header, I'm actually going to give it two arguments. The first one is going to be the endpoint, which needs to be in quotes. Silly me. Um, oh boy, this is all. <laughs> I should have just undid it. That would have been faster. Okay. And then a comma so I can give it a second argument. And that's where I'm going to uh, take this header object here and throw that in. So 
this object has a property called headers, and that is an object, and we're setting the key and value for the headers as accept, and then application.json. Um, so that way we're saying we don't want to receive it back in the default format of HTML, we want to get it back as JSON instead. So that's the fetch. And then I can um, close that out. And then we can say let uh, data equal response. Oh, no, 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 sorry. I am tripping, y'all, because I forgot about the await. We have to have the await or it will not wait. <laughs> okay. And then same thing with data. We're going to await um, the response.json. And that will, once that is unpacked um, and the JSON is available, that gets assigned to data. Now we can use the data. And so this is where we are going to go and we're going to do you know, something like this. We'll log it too, because we actually need to see what the properties are in order to set them. So I'm going to uh, comment that out for a second. And let's just console log data when we click the button and see what happens. Um, it's not working. Why is it not working? Um, sorry, let me go back to here. OK. Oh, I didn't change the. Um, Oh, it, it, it flipped on me. Okay, I am here. If target is that joke. Oh, I didn't call, I didn't call it. <laughs> so that's the thing about creating an async function. You have to then call it in order for it to run. So I, I declared the function and I, I don't have it in the right spot. Let's get it inside this um, if block. Okay, so inside the if block, if it's this button, I declare the function, async function here, Get, get dad choke, and then I actually call it here. Um, and that way, when the button is clicked, this will run. But I've, you know, I've defined it right here before I call it. That's all that's going on here. Okay. Now, when I click on the button, it should run and we should see our log. There we go. Okay. So let's take a look at this. We have an ID of complete nonsense. And then we have the property joke. Um, and we have a status 200. Um, and clearly, it came through. Um, but uh, this is just what the person who wrote the API decided, this is how they decided to put the data together for us. So I'm interested in joke. All I have to do is data.joke and that should give me what we want. So let's come over here and I'm going to um, put this back. Oh my goodness, what did I do? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> what is happening? I was hitting the wrong key, I guess. Um, okay. And uh, instead of data.slipAdvice, because this is a different API, I'm going to do data.joke, and that should put that text in for me. So let's um, take a look. Click on dad joke. And there it is. Why did the scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. Ha, ha, ha. These are kind of fun. I hmm. enjoy these. <laughs> what kind of award did the dentist receive? A little plaque. Oh boy, yeah, fun stuff, right? Okay, so we now have a little example here of how to retrieve um, JSON from three different public APIs. And um, they all are a little bit different. Um, and th there again, you know, what you really wanna do is just um, check the documentation if you're gonna pull something from somebody else's API and make sure you know how to use it and then once you get the data, make sure you understand how it's structured so that you can access the values of all the properties that you are looking for. And that is something that is Hello? done every day in the real world. Somebody, uh, somebody have a question? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, if there are any last uh, aren't any last questions, I can go ahead and you know get you guys off to studio, um, and let's let's get back to here. And I will. Oh, that's right, it restarted it, didn't it? All right, let's just do that. Oh, and now I'm in full screen. Fantastic. Well, hang on, guys. All right, this will make it where it doesn't get blocked off by you guys, except for I don't want that slide. I want this slide. Okay. Studio, you guys are going to um, fork and clone the starter code from launch code that's linked in the instructions. You should be pros at this now. You've done it for a couple of classes. 
And um, you're going to fetch some JSON that's got data about some astronauts, keeping with the theme of launch code, of course. And you're going to actually loop through once you fetch the data and you have you know, that, that object, you're gonna loop through because it's gonna be an array, which is something I did not show you tonight, but is you know not hard to do. You guys know how to loop through data. And you'll just display each thing one at a time by adding you know, the data for that particular object in the array and then create a new little you know, card of sorts for each one of the astronauts with their image and um, everything. So let's take a look at this. Um, yeah, so you can see they've got example here of, of all of the JSON with all the different data that you've got on each of these astronauts. And they're giving you the HTML template. You don't have to come up with this on your own. Um, so they give you the format. The difference is this is hard-coded information and that's not what you want. You're gonna want to reference the properties of the JSON to make sure that all of this text, well, not that text, but this text, like the 190, the faults, uh, this little list right here, and you might have to, you know, do something interesting with that. I'm not sure. Uh, and then the even the the you know images um, that are here for uh, each one of them is going to be um, dynamic. You're going to have a different image for each one of them, and when you're done, it should look something like this. This is the expected results. And then there's some bonus missions where you can, um, you know, display the astronauts sorted from most to least time and space. Um, you can make the text green if they're active, if that's true. Um, you can add, you know, some sort of count somewhere that says this is how many astronauts there are. So you can, you know, really have some fun with data and, you know, putting putting data on the page and kind of make it your own. So I will demonstrate this for you. We'll come back at um, eight o'clock and uh, we'll do that studio review. Uh, and I'm, let's see, let me go back to here. Uh, yeah. Uh, so just so you, again, coming down the pike, we've got TypeScript on Thursday, um, catch up class on Monday, and then we're going to start getting into Angular the Thursday after that. So that's what's coming down the pike. All right. You guys head off, have fun with studio, and I will see you at eight o'clock.